Hey guys, I'm Ich, and here's the thing. Most of my viewers are people who recently started to take sport videography seriously, or they're parents of young athletes or coaches who want to take their videography game to the next level. And the one thing they all want to know is, what's the one camera I would recommend for an up-and-coming sport videographer? So after answering the same question over and over, I finally decided to make this video about the best video camera for shooting sports. So straight off the bat, there's two things I want to make very clear. First of all, like I said earlier, my sport videography tutorials are mainly for amateurs or beginners, if you will. So in this video, I'm going to stick to affordable cameras only, basically models under $1,000. And also, there's no such thing as a perfect video camera. Each camera has pros and cons depending on the sport that you're filming and the result that you're after. So I'm not going to endorse one particular camera that you should all go buy after watching this. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Instead, I'll take you through the difference between the three main categories of camera and explain how each category is best for a particular type of sport. Does that make sense? Well, let's get to it anyway and hopefully it'll make more sense in a minute. As I was saying before, when buying a new video camera, there's three categories that you should consider. Camcorders, DSLRs, and action cams. All three are useful in their own way, so let's break it down. Camcorders are very practical and convenient. Think of them as the Swiss Army knives of cameras. They're usually very ergonomic as they are designed specifically to be held up for long periods of time, as opposed to DSLRs, for example, or designed for taking pictures. They also have a very practical built-in zoom lens with a great range. This allows you to zoom in and out from up close to far, far away without even losing focus. And speaking of focus, camcorders are also great at keeping everything in focus. So quite convenient when filming a very fast and unpredictable sport. But as fun as they sound, camcorders do have a big downside. And that downside is the sensor. At the same price point, a camcorder will always have a much smaller sensor than a DSLR camera and the smaller sensor collects a lot less light, which means that a low light environment like a nice cool gym, for example, could be a very difficult environment for a camcorder and result into grainy CCTV looking footage. Also, a small sensor means no depth of field, so forget about blurry backgrounds and cinematic footage, that's not happening. So what sports should you use a camcorder for? Well, any outdoor sport played on a big surface like football, soccer, cricket, rugby, athletics even. But that being said, a DSLR could also potentially do a great job when shooting the sports I just mentioned. So let's move on to the DSLRs now and explain what they're good for. As previously mentioned, they usually have a big sensor which means that they typically work well in low light environments and can give you a very cinematic look with creamy, out of focus backgrounds. But that does come with challenges. First of all, these great features also rely heavily on the lens that you're using. A lens with a narrow aperture will not let a lot of light into your camera and will give you the same issues as a camcorder. And if you do have a lens with a wide aperture, which allows you to get these blurry backgrounds, that means that getting your subject in focus, especially if he's moving a lot, will be very difficult to do at times. And lastly, speaking of lenses, if you're using a DSLR, different lenses will give you different zoom range, different apertures, different looks, so you might have to change your lens quite regularly while you're shooting, which is very inconvenient. But all that being said, footage from a DSLR will always look aesthetically superior to the footage from a camcorder. But you will need to work a lot harder to get it right. So if you don't have the patience to learn how to properly use a DSLR and work around its limitations, then maybe you should stick to camcorders. But if you're willing to put in the work, your footage will look that much better. Obviously, indoor sports are the ones you really want to consider DSLRs for. But outdoor sports can be filmed with a DSLR as well, as long as you have a bit of practice beforehand. And I also suggest you watch a previous tutorial video of mine about my personal technique to always be in focus. Speaking of always being in focus, the third and last category of cameras does just that. 
Action cams are great because they are always, always, always in focus. Their main downfall is that their sensor is even smaller than the camcorder sensor. So I don't have to explain to you how bad that looks in low light conditions. On the bright side, the size of most action cams and the built-in stabilization allows you to use them in a way that you couldn't use any other camera. And that's what they're good for. An action cam is not a main camera or shouldn't be your main camera anyway. It's a camera that will give you a cool second or third angle from a perspective that no other camera can give you. You can attach them to a goalpost, a skateboard or a helmet, and they're particularly useful when filming long distance sports like skiing, snowboarding, car racing, cycling, or any other sport that would be difficult to cover with only one or two cameras. So in conclusion, action cams are great, but not as your main camera. Camcorders are very practical, but have their limitations. And DSLRs are definitely the professional way to go, but they are much more difficult to use than the other two. So in my opinion, if your goal is to film your daughter's soccer game on Saturday mornings, do a quick edit and put it on YouTube, then go for a camcorder. And eventually you can add an action cam as your second angle from inside the net or from a chess mount on the referee. But if you aspire to take sport videography seriously, then buy a DSLR you can afford, offer your free services to a local club or to your school's football team maybe, and practice, practice, practice? We're talking about practice, man. <laughs> We're talking about practice. Also, once you've made up your mind about what type of camera you're going to buy, usually the more money you spend, the better camera you get. So the most logical way to choose a camera is to decide your budget first and then choose your camera accordingly. And we look forward to seeing you this weekend. So that's it for me guys. Again, I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you enjoyed it so much that you want to see more, then just subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you next time. Peace.